Good day, I am Rupert Aguda and I will be discussing about the methods on laboratory testing of white blood cells. This will be a short, quick, and simple presentation that will focus on routine methods used to assess WBCs in clinical laboratory today. CBC or complete blood count includes quantification of RBCs, WBCs, and platelets. White blood cells is assessed in complete blood count through the WBC count and through the differential count. And the WBC counting could be done manually or automated. And the manual method for WBC counting is also known as the hemocytometer method. Today, it is believed that it still has its purpose. It can be used to check the validity of an electronic method. It can also be used to validate results for profoundly low WBC count from an electronic machine. It can also serve as a backup method. The tools used for the hemocytometer method are the counting chamber, WBC pipette, diluting fluid, thick cover glass or cover slip, and the rubber tubing with an aspirator, which used to be the mouthpiece and later on replaced by the syringe. These are examples of different counting chambers with different purposes. This counting chamber is used to count RBCs and WBCs from cerebrospinal fluid. This can also be used to assess trypanosomiasis. The Howard mold counting chamber is used to determine mold counts. The McMaster egg slide is used in parasitology or veterinary medicine. This is used to quantify eggs per gram of feces. There is also a counting chamber used to assess low WBC count. This one is used to assess nanoplankton or to quantify nanoplanktons. And this counting chamber is used for sperm count and bacterial count. It is a single platform with an improved new Bauer ruling. This one is used for water analysis. Different counting chambers for blood or hemocytometers in the past have different grid types. This illustrates their examples. And of course, the counting chamber that is most familiar to us is the improved new Bauer counting chamber. This is a thick glass slide with inscriptions. The inscriptions could be dark or bright lined. This also has fixed dimensions. The WBC pipette is also called the Thoma pipette. It is a bulb pipette with a white bead inside. It has graduations for up to 11. And in manual WBC counting, we make use of a diluting fluid. The diluting fluid is also called the Turks solution. The Turk solution is a mixture of glacial acetic acid and gentian or crystal violet. The glacial acetic acid is used to lyse the RBCs. The crystal violet is to stain the WBCs for easy visualization. This one illustrates the rubber tubing with the mouthpiece. It is used to suck or aspirate blood and dilute it with the diluting fluid. Later on, the mouthpiece was replaced by the syringe due to health safety reasons. Again, the tools used for the hemocytometer method are the counting chamber, WBC pipette, diluting fluid, thick cover glass or cover slip, and the rubber tubing with mouthpiece that was later on replaced by the syringe. How do we perform manual WBC counting? In hindsight, we simply dilute the blood 1 is to 20 with diluting fluid. 
after mixing, we discard a few drops and fill the counting chamber through capillary motion. We let it stand in a while to let the cells settle. After that, we count all the cells on the four large corner squares. We follow the L rule or the one, cor one corner rule. After counting all the cells, we use the count to compute for the WBC count. We use this formula to arrive for the WBC count per cubic millimeter. We simply multiply the count by the dilution factor multiplied by the depth factor, divide it with the area counted. Wherein the dilution factor usually is 20, since we dilute the blood 1 is to 20, the depth factor based on the dimensions of the counting chamber, and the area counted, which is based on the four corner squares where we counted the cells. To make things easier, cells counted multiplied by 20, multiplied by 10, divided by 4. We can simply use 50 as a factor to get the WBC count per cubic millimeter. Take note though that this computation or this factor is only applicable if you dilute the blood 1 is to 20 and that you only call counted four corner squares. The HEMA cytometer method comes with a lot of errors. These are the sources of error. First is the nature of the sample, the operator's technique, the equipment, field errors, and the presence of NRBCs. Let's look at them one by one. Errors due to the nature of the sample may be attributed to the presence of coagulation and probably to the improper or inadequate mixing of the blood prior to pipetting. Errors in the technique could be seen in pipetting, parallax error, mixing, presence of bubbles while pipetting, failure to wipe off excess blood on the outside of the pipette, and the failure to discard first few drops prior to charging. Errors attributed to equipment and supplies uh, could be seen on sub substandard supplies and equipments, damage or broken glasswares, also, in the contaminated diluting fluid, which is very prone for the growth of molds. Field errors is a type of error that can happen several steps along the procedure. It is attributed to the random distribution of suspended cells in a matrix. This could be seen during sample mixing, dilution, charging, or upon standing of the counting chamber prior to counting. This error could happen because no one has a dictate or no one can tell where the cells would settle during this time. The presence of, sig of a significant number of nucleated RBCs should be corrected because they cannot be differentiated from WBCs. These cells could falsely be counted as WBCs. This can be corrected with a formula. The formula for correcting WBCs is the following. Corrected WBCs is equal to the WBC count multiplied by 100 divided by 100 plus NRBCs in 100 WBCs obtained in the differential count. Now we move on to the electronic counting of WBCs. The most common technology used in a clinical laboratory in hematology is the electrical impedance. With the help of a sheet fluid, particles pass through an aperture one at a time. Each time a particle passes, a pulse is generated. This pulse, or the pulse height generated, is directly proportional to the particle size. This way, one can discriminate WBCs, RBCs, and platelets by the pulse height. There are different new platforms today that primarily differentiates WBCs, RBCs, and platelets by doing them in separate analysis.
there are certain platforms that requires pre-lysis of RBCs before running so that we could generate the WBC count. What are the advantages of electronic counting over the manual counting or the HEMA cytometer method? The most obvious, of course, is the speed, wherein you can already have results within a fraction of a minute. Another advantage is the absence less to no visual fatigue for the technologist. Also, very apparent is a difference in the precision. Results from an electronic counting are more precise. The differential count is used to enumerate the relative percentages of WBC cell types in a given sample. We traditionally do this by preparing a peripheral blood smear. We count and classify up to 100 WBCs. First, we look at it under a lower magnification and if suspicious cells are encountered, we identify them by confirming their identity under higher magnification. In order to properly perform the differential count, one must be able to produce an acceptable stained blood smear. The blood smear must cover two-thirds of the glass slide with a tongue-shaped feathery edge. One must be able to locate the area of morphology. The area of morphology is also known as the monolayer area. This is the ideal area to assess blood cells. The area of morphology is the area behind the feathery edge, where RBCs are relatively separate and is free from artifacts. Performance of the differential count is not free from errors. You may notice that it is difficult to have perfectly identical, identical differential count done simultaneously. This is due to the so-called random distribution error. It could be helpful to be, to be aware of the 95% confidence limit on the difference of one count to another. This table illustrates just that. Clinical laboratories make use of different methods or principles in automated differential counting. They are electrical impedance, flow cytometry, and digital image processing. In the use of electrical impedance in the WBC differential count, the pulse signal determines the cell size. The algorithm set in the system identifies cell population through size cutoff values. With this, it is able to generate a three-part differential. This includes lymphocytes, mixed cell population, and neutrophils. This slide illustrates a histogram generated in a three-part differential. Notice that the smallest cells are the lymphocytes on the left. Monocytes, basophils, and eosinophils in the middle sharing a single region or peak. And the largest cells are the neutrophils on the far right. On the right of this slide are the cell diameter ranges of the cells after sphering as it passes through the aperture. We can now notice one of this method's weaknesses, and that is that it cannot differentiate monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. To some laboratories, this information is already enough. However, leukocyte abnormalities could be overlooked without peripheral blood smear examination. Flow cytometry is a newer technology compared to electrical impedance. Unlike electro electrical impedance, it can generate a more comprehensive differential count. Common components in a system that employs flow cytometry are the 
lysing reagent, laser or light source and its detectors, and the flow cell. Different reagents or technologies could be used to differentiate cells in flow cytometry. After making the cells permeable, some platforms make use of fluorochromes or fluorescent dyes that target nucleic acid within the cells. Some make use of cytochemical reagents, for example, peroxidases, to differentiate the cells. Some employs conductivity. This uses radio frequencies. Radio frequencies provide information in the internal structure of the cell, even including chemical composition and volume of the nucleus. So what happens to the blood sample in flow cytometry? Usually, the RBCs are lysed. In some automated system, lysing reagents of varying strength renders the cell permeable to fluorochrome or fluorescent dyes. With the help of hydrodynamic focusing, individual cells pass through a flow cell within, where it encounters laser or light source. Different detectors gather information for every individual cell that passes. The forward scatter determines the cell size. The side scatter determines the cellular complexity. And the fluorescent signal provides the RNA and DNA information. The combination of these data determine the identity of the cell. This, this slide summarizes the data collected in flow cytometry. Again, forward scatter for the cell size, side scatter for the cellular complexity, and fluorescence which provide information about the nucleic acid content. This set of information is collected and represented by a dot in a graphical representation, also known as a scatter plot. Different systems use different scatter plot design. Even more sophisticated scatter plot makes use of a three-dimensional graphical design like the one shown on the right. Another modern tool used in the peripheral blood examination today is by the digital image processing. This system uses artificial intelligence to identify cells. Unlike electrical impedance and flow cytometry, this requires a pre-prepared blood smear. For this reason, this is usually used in tandem with an automatic slide preparation and staining machine. In a digital image processing system, a camera captures representative photograph of cells in a patient's smear. The pictures are then collected and a computer will compare the image with the data bank. It will assess every representative cell's nuclear size, cytoplasm, color, shape, and density, and try to identify it. Later, the technologies have to validate whether the result generated by the system is indeed correct and makes the necessary adjustment if needed. Again, these are the common modern methods and principles used for differential counting in a clinical laboratory today. Electrical impedance, flow cytometry, and digital image processing. And that concludes my humble presentation. I hope that the lecture was insightful enough for you to consider upgrading or updating your very own system. Thank you and have a nice day.